Fox Sports. We are Black Fox. We are Detroit. Tigers baseball on Fox Sports Detroit is presented by Bell Tire. Tonight at Comerica Park, Justin Verlander will take them out for the Tigers. And since the All-Star break, there haven't been many better than JV. A 4-0 record, an ERA of 167, and 50 strikeouts. Tonight, game two featuring the Tigers and the Royals. Hi again, everyone. Welcome to Tigers Baseball. Mario and Pemba alongside Kirk Gibson. Glad to have you with us here for game two in the series. And what a matchup we have tonight. Gibby Duffy and Verlander about as good as it gets. Well, the young guys is just taking their turn. Now here comes the old guy, Justin Verlander, the Tigers number one. Seems like every time he pitches, he hooks up with the best that they've, everybody's got to offer. And Danny Duffy tonight, JV just when he needs that 95 plus, he gets it. He's got the good changeup, slider, and the curveball. This has been very dominant all year. He's had a couple clunkers. On the other side, Danny Duffer, he's a guy that's got great stuff, always good heater, but he didn't have command until last year. They threw him into the bullpen, and he came out and it taught him to lock in from the first batter on. He's got a devastating fastball slider. And if the change is on, it's that much tougher. A very good matchup. You would expect a close game tonight, so fundamentals are going to be at uh, a premium if you want to win this game. All right, now it just announced a couple of minutes ago the Tigers have made a trade. Eric Ibar coming over from the Atlanta Braves in the National League, which gives the Tigers now another infield. Well, you know, the Tigers have uh, been devastated by injuries, Mario, and they pretty much replaced from within. But tonight they go out inside the organization. Finally, maybe the, one of many moves to come. Well respected around the game, knows how to play the game, any infield position, got good speed. I know when the uh, Anaheim Angels traded him to Atlanta, the guys in the locker room were not real happy. They liked his character, and it seems that he'll be a good fit here at the Tigers clubhouse as well. All right, Mike Avila is going the other way along with minor leaguer Cade Savicki. The Tigers getting a new infielder. By the way, one other note tonight, Miguel Cabrera is out of the lineup. Jared Saltalawakia will place him at first base here again this evening. After a short break, we'll send you back to the Call Sam Studios. Check in with Johnny Kane. Coming up tonight, how about J.D.'s power? He homered again in the ballgame last night. J.D. and the Tigers take on the Royals next.
The Tigers and the Royals tonight. Paolo Orlando getting set to lead things off for KC. And here is the starting lineup for the Royals presented by the Metro Detroit Chevy dealers. It'll be Orlando in the leadoff slot in right field, followed by Chesler Cuthbert at third, Kane in center, Hosmer Morales and Perez in the middle. Perez, really good numbers against Verlander. Gordon Escobar and Mondesi in the bottom three spots for Ned Yost. Justin Verlander tonight presented by Family Heating, Cooling, and Electrical. See JB's record right there, seven of eight have been decided by two runs or less in his last eight starts. Seven innings per start, his last eight as, as well. He's always hooking up. He hooked up with King Philly his last uh, outing. And uh, he's the right guy to have on the mound tonight to get the Tigers out to a new winning streak. Let's take a look at the Tigers starting defense presented by Beaumont Health. Across the outfield, Jay Up, Ty Collins, and J.D. Martinez. Casey McGee at third base, Dixon Machado again at short, Kinsler at second, of course. Salty at first, James McCann behind the dish, and that's uh, just a Verlander on the mound. And no Miguel Cabrera tonight, so it'll be Salt Lamacchia patrolling first base. There is Miggy. He's getting today off. We'll see if uh, he's able to return to the lineup tomorrow. Brad said before the game, couple of days, the most, hopefully. I think they're going to think long term with uh, long term with Miggy, so he may air in a day or two. And Miggy, I uh, was told, wanted to play tonight, but the Tigers are going to be smart about. It. He's played a lot of baseball, and uh, they've got a long way to go yet. Orlando leads it off, and Cuthbert and Kane. Follow Orlando batting 3.30, but since being elevated to the Leadoff slot for the Royals, 3:45. Verlander's 0-1 is a ball inside and low. One ball and one strike. Well, JV has given the Tigers some quality outings since the All-Star break and really all season long. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Orlando looks at a ball inside, two and one. Verlander in search of his 13th win of the season. The earned run average now down to 342. It was in the six range early in the season, but a string of outstanding starts has brought it down. Yeah, he's had a couple of starts where he's uh, had some real clunkers. But uh, pretty consistent here, certainly in the second half of the season leading up to the All Star break as well. Well, the Tigers certainly need him, of course, with the injuries to Pelfrey and Zimmerman and Sanchez going to the bullpen and then back into the rotation. They've needed a guy to kind of stabilize the rotation. He's done it, so has Fulmer. We talk about the young guys the last couple of days Fulmer, Norris, and Boyd. Don't think they're not watching to see how JV responds. Here is the Chevy Silverado most dependable player. We'll go with Justin Verlander in his last eight. Pretty good. Great numbers. ERA 178 has not lost. Opponents only hitting 184 against him. Strikeouts over 10 per nine. Orlando with four home runs, 27 driven in. Very speedy outfielder. Waits on the 2 2 from Justin. And now he's given time as Verlander started the windup. Nice night for baseball here in the Motor City. The temperatures in the upper 70s tonight. Not a whole lot of wind to speak of. There's a strike call to the outside corner. Dale Scott punching him out of there. Well, you saw me draw the circle. He worked him exclusively up and away. Jamie comes out. Look at the tailback action of this fastball. You see Orlando just start walking. He knows it. it's on the corner. Set up nicely by JV. Maybe he thinks it's a little outside as well. Well, one gone now for Cuthbert. Chesler in the ball game last night, two out of four. He'll hit one on the ground at third, knocked down there by McGee. And Cuthbert is out. Two gone. It's Cabrera who is out of action again tonight, Gibby, and uh, as you might expect, a big difference with and without him. Yeah, the numbers certainly uh, lend to we want him in the lineup, but the other thing is beyond the numbers, it changes the whole offense 
of structure. The number two guy in front of him, the four and five guys behind him. And we, they always say you have good length in your in your lineup. That means all the way down through number nine. Of course, that's gets shortened up as well. But again, I think the Tigers are erring on the safe side. And it's a smart thing to do right now. Lorenzo Kane batting 283, couple of hits and an RBI in last night's opener. Eight home runs for Kane this year. His season interrupted by injury. Hamstring problem for Kane landed him on the disabled list. But what a year he had last year for the Royals. In fact, he finished fourth in the MVP, actually third in the MVP voting last year. Now the 1-1 one -one. popped up straight up middle of the infield. It's going to be Kinsler and it's going to be a 1-2-3 inning. We'll go to the bottom of the first. And Kinsler will get things started. The Tigers starting lineup presented by the Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. Ian followed by McGee and Victor Martinez. J.D. batting cleanup in this game today. Upton is in left. McCann catching Salty, Machado, and Collins, your bottom three. And they're facing the left-handed offerings of Danny Duffy. And Danny Duffy, pretty good stuff. Fastball, 95 miles an hour, good slider. The change is the pitch to watch. And Stay tuned. Rod Allen's going to do a little piece on that change if he starts showing a lot of that. It's not lost since the middle of June, actually the beginning of June, the 6th of June. He's had a pretty good role himself. But second in ERA, only two. Michael Fulmer. In the first league. One home is a ball down low to the right handed batting Ian Kinsler. McGee and then Martinez, the top three in the Tigers lineup facing Duffy. Danny, 27 years old, out of Galetta, California. It's fouled back out of play. One ball, one strike. Well, back in July on the 16th, Ian Kinsler that's got Danny Duffy, took him, took him deep, just barely over the fence. So he's feeling good. He's got a couple of home runs in his career against Duffy. 22 of them overall this year. There's a high fly ball, shallow left. Gordon coming in. One gone. Let's take a look at the Royals starting defense brought to you by Tim Hortons. Alex Gordon in left, Paulo Orlando in center, Lorenzo Kane in right, Chesler, Cuthbert, third base, Escobar, Mondesi up the middle, Hosmer at first base, Salvador Perez catching Danny Duffy. There is Casey McGee. How long did it take you to get the Cuthbert guy? A Let's year? see. He uh, broke in last year, and I just started feeling comfortable this year saying it. First and last name. Chesler Cuthbert. It's uh, it's kind of tricky. Now the next level is to say it five times fast. You're up to about three. About I heard three. you practicing. <laughs> that I mess up. 
Duffy ready with the 1-0. Feel free to try it at home. <laughs> Pre-social and post-social. <laughs> Refreshment. <laughs> one ball, one strike. So that means try it in the first and maybe in the fifth. Now Casey McGee, you can say that pretty quickly. That's driven in the air to our right center field. Long run, Orlando. Sliding play out there in right Catch center it. field. Paulo Orlando showing off that sprinter speed. Thought for a moment that ball dropped in, but he caught it. Looked like it bounced to me, of course. No, he got it. Pretty good catch. You can see his speed right there. He got on his horse and went, got it. Always easier to catch the ball out to your side as well. You're catching it in front of yourself. Of course, Duffy liked that effort. I will say this about Casey McGee man he puts the ball in play every single time it seems. And that one looked like a gapper. He'd be a good hit and run guy wouldn't he. He sure would. A good count. Two outs now for Victor Martinez. Martinez elevated to the three spot in the lineup here tonight with the absence of Miguel Cabrera. Everybody moves up. Martinez at 301, 21 homers, looks at a ball low and in, 1 1. Duffy pretty much pitching from the stretch. Not a whole lot to his delivery. Tap foul, 1 and 2. Well, here's the Magic Moonshot presented by Magic Window. Beemeyer got him two times. On June 16th. So he's feeling good. He's got that sweet swing, doesn't he? He really does. Part hit. of a three homer game that day. Yeah, he hit the other one off Wong, didn't he? Chin Ming Wong. Duffy with the 1 2. Lifted back out of play. This promises to be a really good pitching dominated game now whether or not it'll end up that way we'll see but Duffy and Verland are two of the best right now in the American League and JV had himself a one two three first there's a fly ball center field not deep Orlando coming in and Duffy will have a one two three first inning as well. America Park tonight Tigers and Royals game two in the series Menards brings you the big money encounter and JV has been money against the Royals over the years. Well you can see 22 wins. 
career wins versus any opponent. But you know, since they're in the, the division, you do play them a bit more. But he's been very successful against them. Eric Hosmer leads it off here as we go to the second. Hosmer Morales and Salvador Perez. Justin had a 10 pitch 1 2 3 first. Hosmer is homered against JB in his career, just 257 overall, though. A little high, just missed the strike zone 1 1. Hosmer had an RBI last night in the first inning on a sack fly. He finished the ball game 0 for 4. Here's the 1 1. On the ground, hard to second base, knocked down by Kinsler. Plenty of time to throw him out, one gone. Four straight retired by Justin. Well, it was a loud sound right here, Mario, but uh, right at Ian Kinsler, kind of a funny bounce. He goes to his backhand. Bobbles a little bit. Two bobbles so far, one by McGee, one by Kinsler. But you see, they just calmly pick it up. You got plenty of time. Don't make a bad mistake worse. They get him easily. Yeah, that was a great shot there, showing Kinsler not an ounce of panic there. Here is Kenry's Morales. They have the shift on against Morales. Oh, and one on Kenry's. 325 career against Verlander, a couple of home runs. Chopper foul down the first baseline, 0 and 2. And Morales feeling the effects of that one. Boy, he looks like a different guy this year so far. Not swinging the bat with as much authority as he did as consistently last year. That's right off the pad, isn't it? Set it off the shoe in the instep. Well, Ooh. Either way, ouch. Stings a little bit. There's no padding on that instep, even though there is the padding on top of the shoe covering the instep. Guys say that it makes them numb. Well, if it's numb, it can't hurt, right? Yeah, I mean, logically, <laughs> I guess it couldn't. Trust me, it does never, hurt. Never thought of it that way. Yeah. Now, Justin ready with the 0 2. And Morales takes one outside, one ball and two strikes. And you mentioned uh, a different looking Kenry's Morales last year. Not last season, he knocked in 106. And this year, he's at just 55 with about a month and a half to go. Battled through some early slumps. Fouled straight back, had a good rip. We talked about uh, how two postseasons can wear you down. Now he had one last year with Kansas City all the way through the World Series. You know this game every year it's different for you. Sometimes you get on a roll and you get a little bit of luck to go with your physical ability and you stay healthy. It just takes one little thing the next year and gets you off your chart off your course. Well but you mentioned the the two World Series appearances in back to back seasons and, and I think Gibby correct me if I'm wrong but it's not just the extra games you play but it's the fact that you lose a month to kind of recuperate in the offseason as well. Yeah that's exactly right you don't get as much recovery time. The other thing is it's mentally tough. Get another you know, many of viewers may say well you know that, that's got to be easy it's, I'm telling you it's not easy. The mentality part takes a lot out of you. Swing and a miss and down goes Morales. There's a good change up by JV got a good grip pick right there. Ball disappears up front. See the good arm motion from that shot right there very good. Five up five down against Verlander that'll bring up Salvador Perez. Who has not been afraid of Verlander in his career? You see the numbers there 469. And Oddity. Couple dingers. They're looking to strike on the outer edge, 0 1. Just to finish up on that mental exhaustion, Sparky Anderson used to always teach us when we were young you should play a game, have 
not done anything in the game but be mentally tired, exhausted, and that's how you want to play the games. You got to lock in whether you're going to get a ball, get a chance to do something or not. Now the 0 1. Outside, one ball and one strike. Do you think that if we stood up for every game for a week, that would be different than us sitting down? Oh, no question. So that's another element. You just stand on your feet, you're running out to your position. But it's fun. Wish I was young again. Swing and a miss. Well, I mean, think about what the outfielders go through, and you can speak to this. I mean, it, trying to lock in for every single pitch, I mean, it's, that's got to be a challenge throughout the course of 162 games. The thing about it is, when you can feel it when you're getting weak mentally, that's when you really got to tell yourself to kick it in. You learn to identify it. Got to bring it every day, every way. Here's the one two, and it's outside, two and two. You should uh, put that on a t shirt and sell those. That's bring a it song, every day, right? Every Taking way. care of business. Oh, it is, isn't it? Little Blackman Turner Overdrive you dropped on me. PTO. Yeah. Two and two. Randy Bachman would be proud. A yes. check swing, did he go? Negative, did not, says first base umpire Lance Barrett, and the crowd doesn't like it. Well, we'll give it to him. Three and two. Gordon waiting on deck. Two outs, nobody on in the second. What do you think it feels like to be that umpire after you make a call like that when the people are hooting on you? It's tough. Or they don't care one or the other. They've heard it so many times. They're probably like, whatever. Uh, they hear it. Trust me. I don't think there's anybody on the field, umpire, managers, coaches, players that like to be booed. Sometimes you can make it into a game and make it fun. Sounds, sounds like you have experience. Oh, I that. do. <laughs> 3 2 pitch, a bouncing ball left side. Gobbled up there by McGee. That's going to be a 1 2 3 for JV now. Six up, six down. Sports Detroit is brought to you by Comerica Bank. Raise your expectations of what a bank can be when it's time. Come to Comerica and find your summer and performance with great deals at the Jeep Summer Clearance Event. Gorgeous day has turned into a nice night and a scoreless ball game as we go to the bottom of the second. Which one of those do you own, Gibby? Probably the big one in the middle right there. None anymore. Ball. I've done some sailing though on one of our strike years. All the way up into the Georgian Bay and around. Nice. Mackinac Island, Tobermory to Mackinac Island. 
There's a drive to left field. It's going to get down and go to the corner. Extra bases for J.D. Martinez, who leads it off with a double. He remains scalding hot. In the first inning, the Tigers took the first pitches. J.D. ready to go right here. Gets a cookie right down the middle. Puts a good swing on it. Easy double. Martinez now has extended his hitting streak to seven straight. 24th double of the year, and that'll bring up Justin Upton. Justin 0 for 4 in the opener last night. He'll drive it foul back out of play on one. Jay, if you want to get that ball to the right side of the diamond, advance JD. Play a little small ball here. If you're going to be in a tight game, you want to take every run you can get. One by one, if that's the case. Swing and a miss. 0 and 2. Tigers last night had only one at bat the entire game with a man in scoring position. And they've got an early double here from J.D. Martinez. Upton batting 228. Fought that one off emergency style. That's an emergency hack there, 94 miles an hour. Just got done swinging and missing at the changeup, so you got to go into battle mode. if we can see in there and get that change of grip. Does he switch it or does he stay with it? Change up. Swing and a miss. He struck oh, him out. He changed it. So you can't relay, relay those signs from second base. It's a late change in the glove. Take a look at uh, Duffy's pitch usage. 40% four seam. 21% slider. Sinker as well. And he's mixing in the changeup. Pitchers get into situations where they have been in scoring position. That's where they throw the kitchen sink at you. Well, Duffy coming off a really good start. His last start against the White Sox through his con first complete game. Nine innings, seven hits, one run, and seven strikeouts. McCann, the batter. Ball one high. James has been swinging the bat much better. Off of lefties as well, 271. As of late, even better than that. Outfield has him a little bit the other way. There is room in left center. Well, there's a lot of room. That's a triple. Here's the 1 0 pitch. Checked it. Two balls and no strikes on McCann, who has five hits in his last 11 at bats. And 38 driven in this year for the Tigers backstop. Duffy's 2 0. 3 0 on McCann. And let him swing. Can on the last homestand hit his first ever career grand slam. Salt Lamacchia waiting on deck. He does swing on 3 0 and drives it back out of play. Tigers are not a big 3 0 swing team. Many times, I, I don't know who Brad gives it to and who, who the, he does not, but many guys will not take it even if they are given the freedom to swing at it. Something about it, I always liked it. James McCann obviously confident in his own abilities there. Well, he's got Martinez at second with one out. Center field. 
right at Orlando. Runner will tag and JD will hold up. Two gone. That's going to leave it up to Saul Tilabakia. So Duffy responds with a strikeout and a flyout. Salty last night was 0 for 2 after coming in for Cabrera, who left the game. I can see uh, looking at the Tigers lineup tonight if they get into a two out situation they would pitch around James Buchan to pitch to Salty because he is not as strong hitting against lefties as he is righties. High fly ball right field. Cruising in is Lorenzo Kane and the Tigers will waste a leadoff double. Yeah, guys, he's a very good player. He was having somewhat of a down year compared to his uh, previous seasons, especially uh, those years with the Angels. But a quality pickup by Alavila, and uh, the Tigers now gain some depth as Alex Gordon leads it off and looks at a ball low, one ball, one strike. Like I said in the open, it's the first time really the Tigers have went out of the organization this whole year after all the moves they've had to make from within. So that tells you that uh, we were kind of. Doing a little thing on our depth, the first wave and the second wave. And the first wave is already here, so now you look at the second wave, and it appears that he likes the talent outside better than inside the organization. Two and one on Gordon. Cage Savicki, the minor league catcher that was sent in that deal, was at Lakeland this year, batting 282. He has a good talent. He had a pretty good player. Yeah, he was out of LSU. Two and one on Gordon. Swing and a miss. Well, there you have it. Imar comes to the Tigers. Avila Savicki goes the other way. And uh, Mike Avila proved to be a very versatile guy, but I think, uh, as Al said, Ibar provides a little bit more offense. Yeah, he's uh, got good pedigree and good influence within the clubhouse. Mike Avila is a great guy. He's done a heck of a job in Detroit. Sometimes you get just on the wrong side of deals and you hate to 
if you're Mike, you don't want to go to Atlanta and leave Detroit, but uh, that is the game, the business side of it. We've all been on that side. Three and two on Gordon, the leadoff man here in the third, no score. Little pop up, shallow center field, Machado and Kinsler. Kinsler runs it down. Seven straight retired by JV. Good communication right there. Machado is not his normal partner, so you want to make sure you're communicating. I was talking to Al Kaline today in the Tigers clubhouse. He was talking about the communication aspect of infielders and outfielders. Just everywhere in the diamond. It's one of his pet peeves. And good job right there. Keep a routine play routine. Here is Alcides Escobar batting 260 on the year. He'll sky this one in the air to center. That's going to be routine for Collins. And there are two gone. A couple of quick outs for Justin here, and that'll bring up Raul Mondesi. Mondesi had one of the biggest at bats. In fact, I guess you could argue had two of the biggest at bats last night. Had bunt base hits, driving a run in the sixth. And then the sacrifice setting up another run in the ninth. Let me get my watch out. We got him at a 3 4 8 last night. You know, you're fast when the third baseman is not only in on the infield grass, but way in on the infield grass. Yeah, that's where he belongs, right there. Because even at that, if he makes a bunt, you're going to have to have, get it and get rid of it. Pull down the right field line. That ball is hooking. And it is a fair ball and home run. Well, he didn't need any speed for that. He hooked one just inside the pole, and Mondesi has his first home run. Well, I didn't see that coming. You know, he hit a ball in his first at bat last night on the on the button too, just to try to get a fastball over for strike one. It's just middle in, belt high. Mondesi shows he's got a little pop. First major league home run for Raul Mondesi. His dad hit 271 of them in the big leagues. One nothing Royals. That's their first hit of the game. Orlando looks at a strike. Not quite as big as his dad. It didn't look like, but. Uh, no, not uh, nearly. His dad was pretty fast. And he scored what, 30 stolen steals three times in his career. Yeah, his dad finished with over 200 steals. Nice line foul back out of play. 0 and 2 on Paulo Orlando. Orlando struck out to start the ball game. Here's the 0 2. Swing and a miss. Orlando goes down swinging. And that'll be it for the Royals. They get a run, though, on the homer by Mondesi.
in favor of the Royals as we go now to the bottom of the third. M. Jim Grand Detroit brings you the scouting report on Danny Duffy. The opponent's average against his changeup is pretty low. Yeah, 122. See Michael Fulmer up there. 0.081 though. Duffy delivers a strike to Dixon Machado. Machado Collins Kinsler in the Tigers third. Dixon one out of five since his call up from Toledo. One ball one strike. Machado last night was 0 for 2. That's fouled back out of play one and two. Duffy allowed a leadoff double to J.D. Martinez in the second but the Tigers could not even advance him. He ended up standing at second base. Duffy got a strikeout, a couple of flyouts. Here's the one two. And Machado takes high, two balls and two strikes. See Duffy, much like Justin Verlander, they get ahead, they go right to the top of that zone, trying to coax a swing. Right at the top or just a little above? Swing and a miss. Here goes the changeup. On gone, we check in now with Kristen Keith. Mario, last night we brought you the story of the rally manis, the praying manis that the Royals found in their dugout last Sunday. Well, that praying manis passed away on Friday, so it'll no longer be the team mascot, but they got a new one. Check out what happened, what they found out at last night's game. Last night during the game, I kind of saw one fly in the dugout to the corner, and I went over and looked, and then I, I told some of the guys, and some of the guys saw it. Bolquez and, and Escobar got really into it and they both uh, made very strong efforts to capture it and with the help of a fan because it had, it had crawled onto the top of the dugout the fan nudged it onto a baseball bat and then they brought the bat in and, and the mantis was was ours after that. Well, the Royals celebrated a birthday last night so Lorenzo Kane had bought a cake for the guys that now cake tray that plastic cake tray. That's now Rally Manis Jr.'s home, and it is right behind me over here. The guys actually went and rubbed that tray whenever Mondesi hit that home run, Mario. <laughs> Rally Mantis Jr., I like it. Well, whatever works for these guys down on the field. Tyler Collins, the batter, he swings and misses. The One Chinese man Manis grows to 4.3 inches long. I just did a little fact check. They will bite you, but they, See? Don't, they don't hurt. I told you last night, don't touch it. It can bite you. In a good life? One year. Really? That's yeah. it? Mm -hmm. They're very sensitive to climate, so I hope the boys are taking better care of this one than the last one. One two is golf foul out of play. It is bad luck to kill a mantis. Mm. So I read. When did you do all this research? While you were talking. <laughs> That's pretty quick. There it is. Gibby actually, Billy Burns is really doing his research has been all over YouTube all over the internet he knows that they only live about a month and that they eat moths so actually he and Ian Kennedy went out and uh, caught a bunch of moths and so they've been feeding him about a moth a day right now so they're trying to keep this one alive doing the best they can so if we see <laughs> holes in the uniforms tomorrow we'll know the moths are really having <laughs> exactly. a good time <laughs> where do you go to go catch moths that's what I said. They said they're all over the dugout. Ballpark's a perfect, perfect place for moss. I just had no idea it was a perfect place for a praying mantis. <laughs> and nor did I. Two gone as Collins pops up at second. But we'll keep our eyes on the uh, praying mantis junior, I suppose, for the Royals. Kinsler, the batter now with two outs. He flying to left field his first time up. Just to put this to rest, I think they should catch another one. And they should have a, like, in between innings mantis race. I like entertainment. it. Top of the dugout. How would you coach a mantis? I don't know. It looks like it's having a whole lot of fun in that cage, doesn't yeah. it? Looks a little steamy to me. The mantis saw him, folks. Now Duffy facing Kinsler, who is sold for five now in the series. And Ian takes one right down the middle of strike call. 95 on that last fastball from Duffy. Royals lead one nothing on of all people the modesty home run. First career homer. 
A one pitch is on the outer edge. Ooh, Kinsler didn't like it. We were told the Montessi home run went out in about four seconds. That's yes. 106 miles an hour. And I timed him around the bases, 19.69 seconds. So that's that's loafing for him. Yeah. You figure it took him 3.5 seconds to get down to first. Be about 12 seconds on a home run inside the Parker. 12, 13 seconds. 0 2 is lifted in the air to shallow center field. Orlando coming on. And it'll be a 1 2 3 inning for Danny Duffy. Top of the fourth here at Comerica Park. Mario and Pemba, Kirk Gibson, glad you're with us. Also, Ron Allen down on the field checking in. And uh, Rod, I guess what we expected here tonight, pretty good pitching matchup. Oh, no doubt. You have a couple of guys that have plus fastballs. They both have good secondary pitches with the slider, of course. Duffy, now that new changeup he's been throwing that he's perfected lately that has allowed his numbers to get to a whole nother level. Well, back to work goes Verlander facing Cuthbert, the number two hitter, and he looks at a breaking ball strike 0 1. Cuthbert, then Kane, and then Hosmer here in the Royals fourth. Home run by Raul Mondesi, the difference. First big league homer. The 0 1 pitch is fouled straight back, 0 and 2. Cuthbert bounced out back in the first inning. He's 0 for 1. Had a double in the ball game last night. JV has struck out three so far in this game. Now the 0-2. That's popped up right side of the infield for Kinsler. One gone. That'll bring up Lorenzo Cain. You know, one of the things, Rod, we wanted to do was kind of compare Michael Fulmer to Justin Verlander through 19 starts in each of their careers. And, and Fulmer really, when you start adding up the numbers, compares quite favorably. Well, they appear to be cut from the same cloth. That much we do know. Verlander 10 and 6, Fulmer 10 and 3. Better ERA for Fulmer. Whip for strikeouts um, also better for Michael Fulmer. And the whip a little bit lower too. So you can arguably say he's had a better start to his career, but he's got a long way to go huh. to get to what Justin Verlander has been able to accomplish in the big leagues. Yeah, if you you look at Justin Verlander, he's got lots of innings, and he's had to recreate himself. He has been injured. Now he's on his way back. Michael's uh, very young in his career, but very impressive so far. Kane looks at a ball outside. One ball and one strike. Lorenzo popped up in his first at bat. Tell you the hardest part for Michael Fulmer is not to impress us. He's already done that, but it's going to be 
able to show that he can be durable is a guy like a guy like Justin Verlander. There are very few pitchers in the big leagues that can do what JV has done over the length of the time. In there, a strike called one and two. And Verlander has a lot of life on that fastball, but we've seen that for the last couple of months. Anywhere from 94 to 96 miles an hour with that real good uh, spin rate on it, which allows the fastball to just jump right by a lot of right handed hitters and left handed hitters. This pitch has been explosive, the fastball. Little looper in a shallow right field. Kinsler back, makes the running catch. Nicely done by Ian. You know, we always talk about the range that Iglesias has from the shortstop position going into the outfield and taking away would be base hits, bloop singles. But Ian Kinsler, he has as much range going into the outfield from his second base position. Underrated defender is Ian Kinsler. The thing about that is what a break he got on that ball direct route and uh, there's full efficiency in making that catch yeah, if you take a one fault step you don't catch that ball but Kinsler as Rod said he just he's on it. Now Hosmer with two outs. And Verlander throwing that fastball at least the fastballs to get ahead straight downhill from that six foot five inch frame that he has. Osmer is 0 for 1 with a ground out in this game. Justin threw 112 pitches in his last start, the most that he has thrown in a start this year. In fact, the most he's thrown since his last start of last season. There's a hard ground ball to short. Machado gets down there to make the play. And JV has a nice 1, 2, 3, fourth inning. Little help from his friends, though. Ian Kinsler showing off some range. Crashing to the wall, so they moved the warning track a little, a little further out towards center field to give him much more room. So that when he does go on the track, he knows when he's there, and he hasn't run into many walls since they extended that warning track in center field at Kauffman Stadium. I didn't know that, and uh, of course, uh, it was Martinez, JD, who ran into the wall in right field and fractured his elbow. Little bouncer to second, Ramondi see his position. One out. 
Hey guys, I want to show you this uh, Duffy changeup, and he's already used it quite a bit here tonight. It's a filthy pitch for him these days. We know he's got the fastball, we know he's got the slider, but this changeup, take a look at the swings that most of these right handers are taking on the changeup. It's that Bugs Bunny changeup. It looks like it stops when it gets halfway to home plate, and these are big league hitters taking swings at the changeup. He likes to throw it in 2 1 counts, 1 0 counts, 3 1 counts, and that's what makes his pitch so devastating for Danny Duffy, and it's one of the main reasons why he's taking major steps and being one of the best left-handers in the American League. Here is Martinez to face him. Yeah, you see the swings. They're missing it by six, six, six inches to a foot. So, uh, like Rod says, that's they're thinking they're cheating on that heater that's 95 plus, and they have that great arm motion. The action is like you termed it, Bugs Bunny. Roll to third base, an easy play there for Cuthbert. Two gone. Gibby, that's a great point by you talking about the arm action and the arm speed. Here's the fastball. The fastball gets up to 95. He can get up to 99 miles an hour if he wants to. It's straight over the top, four seam fastball. Tigers are swinging right through that pitch here tonight when he has decided to throw it. He does have the changeup also that we talked about, throwing that pitch from the same arm slot. So, really difficult to differentiate exactly what pitch is coming. We're going to show you a split spring as the, of, of the arm angles, and the only difference, obviously, is the way that he's gripping the baseball. But as a hitter, it looks like the same pitch coming out of his hand. One's at 95, one's at 85. And J.D. skies this one to right field. Playable for Kane. And Lorenzo makes the catch to retire the side. Snappy fourth inning for Danny Duffy. Sports Detroit is brought to you by the Michigan Lottery. Play the new big league raffle from the Michigan Lottery to win cash and baseball prizes. And by Kroger. And what a great night downtown tonight. The Tigers and Royals in game two in this series. And it's 1-0 KC. It'll be Morales, Perez, and Gordon here in the fifth. Both teams have just one hit. The difference, the Royals hit, left the ballpark. Home run by Mondesi. Jumped in first pitch. Strike one on Kenry's Morales. And yeah, tough part of the lineup here for Verlander. Morales has pretty good numbers against Justin, and we know what Salvador Perez in the on deck circle has done against Verlander. Here's the 0 1 pitch. Rounded foul down the first baseline. We were talking earlier, Rod, about Morales. Uh, he's got a couple home runs off JB, 325 average, but seems to be swinging the bat a little differently this year. Have you noticed anything? Well, he was not hot when the Tigers made a trip to uh, Kansas City. I think it was about six weeks, two months ago, but 
The Tigers got him hot in that series and he went on to have a pretty good month but he's kind of slowed down again so not necessarily swinging the bat the way that he did last year when he pretty much carried them in the postseason. And look at a ball high one and two the count. So Salvador behind him hitting uh, he's got a couple dingers as well then Gordon and Escobar have not done very well so again when you look at navigating through a lineup you hope you can keep these hot hitters off of the base pass. Well, I mentioned last year Morales had 22 homers in 106 RBIs. The average as well was at 290 last year. It's down to the 240 range this year. Still very dangerous. Infield playing the shift to the right side. Here's the 1 2. In on his hands, and again, he bangs one off his foot. Second one of the game. You know, uh, We've talked a lot about the young kids and we watched Fulmer throw his game and you, we were comparing him to Justin Verlander. Why is it that Verlander gets a lot more foul balls than Fulmer? Seems Fulmer's balls are in play. JV's are out of play. It's a great question. I, I, think that run. I think Verlander throws more fastballs. I, I really do. I mean, Fulmer, when he's gone out there, since he found that changeup, he's not trying to strike people out for the most part. Uh, he's pitching to a lot more contact. He will start you off with a fastball, but then he'll go to his softer stuff, whether it be the slider or the change, and there is much more contact put in play on those particular pitches. But Justin Verlander has been living all season long with the elevated fastball anywhere from 94, 95, and big league hitters are able to foul that ball off. Two and two the count now on Morales. One of the deals is the change it brings a lot of ground balls almost 58 percent ground ball rate for Fulmer. And we'll get back out of play. JV is only around 36 percent so. He's got a little different action and the, the change up really goes down and that is his money pitch. Gets his strikeouts on the sliders generally. But I even with Michael Fulmer, it seems like a lot of his high pitches that he throws at the top of the zones, he hit ground balls off those. So he must have some late action on that and some late finish on those pitches. Something that we don't see from here in the booth or from the TV. Hitters don't seem to square up the ball very often on Fulmer. Yeah, that's the one amazing thing about him uh, the fact that he's made as many starts as he had this year. And when you look at his lines, does not give up a lot of hits does not give up a lot of hard contact and his mound presence is incredible really I have not seen a rookie since uh, we laid eyes on Verlander back in 2006 high towering fly ball center field Collins under it and finally Morales retired one out let's take a look at uh, Kendrys Morales but he's had a couple of foul balls we've got that at bat on the left in the second inning. JV's keeps going in there. They're always so good. They're so accommodating once they know you hit one off there. One's off the instep, one's off the right knee. So he's got a lot of problems. Uh, Kendrys Morales, I don't know if he's going to make the game. That's a good thing that speed, not part of uh, his huh. game. <laughs> <laughs> you ever had a game like that, Rod? You get beat up like that? Absolutely. And the thing about it is, like I say, Verlander is going to keep coming in there. He's going to keep letting him hit him off that uh, that shin or that ankle or the instep or whatever you want to call it. Salvador Perez, a bounce out in his first at bat. Good breaking ball, and it's in for a strike. That's what sets Justin Verlander apart. He knows that Perez is hitting nearly 500 against him, so he does not give him that fastball in the predictable fastball count, but he throws the off speed pitch. And he had Perez fooled and out in front. If you're Perez, you really don't know what you're going to get here now. But you still have to be looking fastball all the time with Justin. Swing and a miss. Look out, JV. Dropped the first pitch over for the strike breaking ball. Then he think he disguises the next breaking ball, this one here, as a fastball. Starts at about waist high and out of the zone. It turns into a chase breaking ball up in the count one and two. Another one. Got the curveball working. Two gone. <laughs> Only two outs. Verlander was headed to the dugout. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Got to give a smile there. That's a fine, isn't it, Rod? You know, back in Kangaroo Court, it would be a fine. 
This is just a good breaking ball. He's really feeling it right now. The first one was to get me over, kind of a rolling middle of the zone, and then this one here, he really torqued it. And look at JV walking off. <laughs> I'm gonna go get a drink. Whoops. Yeah. You always try to disguise it. Yeah. <laughs> you remember the, doing that, Rod, don't you? Absolutely. There's always times when you run off the field when you think there's three outs. And he'll hear it when he gets in the dugout. Two outs. There you go. Let's make it official. Here's Gordon. That would, be re that would be really good if the public address announcer would just get on there and say, announce the next hitter and say, there's two outs. I think JV probably wouldn't hear it though. Now the 1 0 pitch, and Gordon checks his swing, didn't go. Well, the Bernstein advantage brings you the pitcher banner matchup, and Gordon, 30 strikeouts career against Verlander. That's the most of any hitter right now, so what JV has had his number. But he's behind in the count, 2 0. And he'll look at a ball down low. That last graphic you put up, Mario, Mario speaks volumes of just how good Justin Verlander is at negating what left-handers do against him as far as damage is concerned. All four of those guys swing the bat left-handed against Verlander. He's got that changeup. That's the pitch he's really used a lot to get Gordon out over the years. And that's uh, an 83 pitches coming into this game. So that's over a third of the ABs, over a third of the ABs. That is a very high ratio. And Gordon is a guy that has had a good major league career with the bat. Although this year, Rod, he is struggling, had the uh, broken hand in May, and just has not been able to put together Gordon like numbers. I think that's all part of it, Mario. Last couple of years, Gordon has missed a lot of time. I believe it was a wrist last year, another injury this year on the disabled list. He's basically trying to catch up right now. The 3 1. Driven deep to right field. That ball way back, and that ball is going to go. It is out of here a home run for Alex Gordon and it's 2 nothing KC. Ooh, that's one of the furthest balls I've seen hit to right field this year. Odor hit one earlier this year that went quite a ways up into right field but that one by Alex Gordon is one of the furthest we've seen. Alex Gordon uh, gets a hang and break a ball here I believe JV went to the well one too many times and it's just kind of a hanger on the outside part of the plate 88 miles an hour. Full extension that uh, went up over the bell tire side, like Rod said. You don't see him hit that far very often here in Comerica. Verlander has given up just two hits in this game, and both of them are home runs to right field. Alcides Escobar stands in with two outs. Fouled straight back. Now we know why Justin tried to walk off after the second out. Well, take a look right here. We're going to show this uh, release on Justin Verlander on that home run ball. After releases, you could tell it didn't come off the way he wanted it. And he looks at his finger here. The seams, he just didn't catch him the way he wanted to. The ball hangs and out of the park. Hope it's not a blister or he didn't cut it. Royals coming into this game. Had uh, controlled the season series, winning seven of 11 against the Tigers this year. Yeah, a couple of teams the Tigers have had some difficulty with in the Central. Uh, that would be Kansas City and, of course, the Cleveland Indians. Cleveland Indians. Cleveland's beat up on Kansas City as well. They've had a hard time. If Cleveland can't beat Minnesota. 0 oh, and 2 on Escobar. Bouncing ball foul. Let's take a look at the central conflict here. The Tigers against the central 20 and 25 against the rest of the uh, MLB 43 and 30. That uh, got to win your games within your division if you want to go deep into the playoffs or even get to the playoffs. Chop to the shortstop Machado running scoop. Got him. Nice play. Any over, however, the Royals get another run on the home run by Gordon. They go to the bottom of the fifth, two nothing. Tigers baseball presented by Bell Tire.
First score as we go to the bottom of the fifth inning. Stay tuned to Tigers Live following the game. We select the Fox Sports Detroit Tigers player of the game. Presented by McDonald's. Stop by for your breakfast favorites. Now being served all day. Justin Upton swings right through at 0-1. It'll be Upton McCann, Salt to Lamakia. Well, the Tigers, you remember back to a 7 0 win in the last game in Texas. Now, uh, one run in the last 13 innings, having trouble figuring out last night and again tonight. Upton struck out his first time up. And Duffy bouncing one in, one ball, and one strike. Danny Duffy did not make the starting rotation for the Kansas City Royals out of spring training. But they had a couple of injuries. He was pitching out of the bullpen, and he was pitching very well in the bullpen. And then they put him back in the rotation, and then he went and started pitching from the stretch. He basically scrapped the windup, went to the stretch, and he's been much more efficient in the strike zone. He's averaging nearly six strikeouts per walk this season after going back in the rotation. Yeah, 10 strikeouts per nine. That ball's hit pretty good to right field, but it's going to be Kane circling one out. And they're talking about it just simplifies things when you don't go through the windup. That windup, you got a lot of arms and legs in the, to sync up. The simplification has really helped them. And also talking to the people from Kansas City, they felt like when you're a starter, you, you come out of the bullpen early in the game, and many guys have trouble in the first inning. But with Duffy, he went into the bullpen, and it really made him lock in early and concentrate you come in many times with guys on base of course your job is to strand those runners and they became very good and effective at that now back to the starting rotation he's carried that mentality into the starting rotation and it's one of the reasons he has not lost since early in June. McCann fly to center and he's only at bat 0 for one. When you talk about simplifying that delivery his walks per nine is under two this season and uh, for most of his career was north of three. Jim Leland used to always compare Justin Verlander to Danny Duffy. This is when Danny Duffy was struggling as a starter didn't have great command but he had power stuff obviously. He'd always say if this kid ever figures it out he will be as dominant as Justin and we're starting to see a youngster starting to figure it out and Danny Duffy. Yeah he's in the prime of his career I believe he's 27 years old JV now 32 so. Figure what's he going to be in five more years? ERA leaders, Michael Fulmer, 2.25, leads the American League. Danny Duffy right behind him at 282. Now the 0 2. In on his hands, fouled it back. I don't know if you saw Rod down there that McCann was talking to the home plate umpire. Duffy quick pitched him on that first pitch. Did kind of like a slide step. I don't know that you have to stop with nobody on base. He must have learned that from Johnny Cueto. Huh. Yeah, he probably did. <laughs> he did it earlier in the game as well. He's done it a couple of times here tonight. McCann waits on the 0 2. One ball, two strikes. Mario, you may remember a few years back, and Gibby, I know you remember this as well. Zach Grinke was struggling a little bit. He had to go home with some personal problems. When Grinke came back, they put him in the bullpen. Grinke rediscovered his fastball while pitching out of the bullpen, just like Duffy has. And then when Grinke came back, he won a Cy Young, and of course, Grinke has gone on to be one of the best right handers in our sport the last five years. Well, the thing about when you're in the bullpen, too, you know you're not. Asked to go nine innings or even seven innings in 100 pitches. So you're going to let it go. You're going to come in. You're going to throw your top velocity. That's one of the advantages as well. And then you click everything else in, and the confidence goes up, and then everything follows. Here's the 2 2. It's outside. Three balls and two strikes. Duffy went through a stretch a few years ago in which he decided that maybe baseball wasn't in his future. He asked the Royals for a leave of absence to try and decide where he wanted to go with his future. And uh, fortunately for KC and for Duffy, he chose to come back. And it's really begun to flourish now this year. You know, many ball players go through those moments, uh, if not publicly, at least privately. Right. And uh, you, you. Generally you have mentors that uh, somehow you get hooked up with and they generally give you many reasons why that's not what you want to do. And hopefully you get on your way and you experience success and uh, 
win a world championship. Little pop up shallow right field for Kane. And Duffy now getting a couple of fly ball outs. Let's take a look at our bell tire pitch by pitch. It's the Duffy changeup. Uh, we well document the fact that it's a plus plus pitch for him these days. And you can see the Tigers. You have to respect 95 96 with a fastball. And then when you've got this same arm slot, same window that you're throwing this pitch out of, and it's be the change piece, you're going to see some uncomfortable swings. And the Tigers have had some uncomfortable swings tonight against Danny Duffy. But really, most of his opponents lately have really had uncomfortable swings against him. Yeah, the last. The bat right there by McCann. You see that fastball ate him up. Got a little deep, protecting a bit for that changeup, and makes that fastball play up even more. Tigers have had some tough assignments lately, man. It started with Ivo Kuma <laughs> in Seattle. Then you had King Felix. Then you had Darvish. And then you had Hamels. They beat Hamels finally. Outside, two balls, no strikes. Talk about facing some real tough pitchers in one week span. What Leland always used to say about that's the big leagues. Yeah, that's right. That's <laughs> right. You're going to face these guys every night. That's right. Leland never made any excuses. No. Nope. Ian Kennedy last night threw a good game for KC. They won 3 1. Popped up foul back out of play. 2 1 on Salty. Ian Kennedy has more strikeouts this year on his fastball than any pitcher in the American League. On his fastball, he has 105 strikeouts. On his fastball, and he had five strikeouts in last night's game. Four of the five came on the Kennedy fastball, so Kennedy definitely has a good fastball that hitters miss. Yeah, he's sneaky. He's got that easy delivery. He's not big in stature. Gets on you quick. That ball belted in the air to center field and deep. Orlando going back to the wall and gone to dead center for Saul to Lamakia. To the bushes and the Tigers are on the board. Gets a little fastball right here. Gets the head out this time. It stays right up central. Struck properly. Salty. Getting that combination of catchers with the Tigers with great production and Orlando just runs out of room right here. That's a long way out there, isn't it, Rod? Absolutely. That's about 430 feet from home plate, right out in the bushes out there, Gibby. That's about as far as you used to hit him. She got in the center field, I did. Hey, um, Salty very easily could have got caught looking for a change up here in the 2 1 count because Duffy has thrown so many change up and fastball counts today. But he knew where his bread was buttered. He was looking for the heater. He got it at 94, and he, boy, did he not miss it. So that's, uh, he's got seven hitting left handed. That's his fourth hitting against left handers this year for Salty. Generally, a little more productive out of the other batter's box, but uh, contributing tonight from the right side. 437 feet on that home run to center. Machado looks at a strike called and it's now one and two. You always hope a little bit of emotion gets you thinking right in that dugout and it's contagious. So that's 20 home runs now out of the catching position for the Tigers 11 for Salta La Machia and nine for McCann. They have better numbers than any catcher in baseball. Of course, this is a tandem of McCann and Salta Lamaki. But if you look up any other catcher, they do not have the kind of numbers that this tandem has here in the Motor City. They've been awesome this year as far as the power numbers and driving in runs are concerned. Oh, look out. Up and into Machado, who bends out of the way. That'll wake you up. Full count. Certainly not intentional. You always wonder how a pitcher is going to react once he's cruising along in the game and then he gets he gets uh, gives up a home run or gets in some uh, trouble. Hammer to left field Gordon going over he'll make the catch at the warning track easy. Tigers on the board. They get one back against Duffy. How about this one by Salt Lamakia dead center. And the Tigers now trail by one.
Right. The bunt, 3-4-8 down the line right here. Tigers did not get it out. They went out and lose the game. And tonight, first pitch, jumps him. 19.6 seconds around the bases. What one do you want to pick on that one? What would you take? It's fun running those bases, isn't it, Raj? Absolutely. Last night, he beat the Tigers with his legs. Tonight, he's trying to beat the Tigers with his power. I'm still trying to figure out how he bunted that ball from the left side last night and got down the line in 3.5 seconds. Now, if I was salty, I'd be in further. Take it right away. Still want him to swing the bat. JB's going to make better pitches this time. One and one on Modesty. Well, I got the clock on him. It's exciting to watch, but uh, test your defensive ability. Got to keep him off the bases. Here's the one one pitch. It's a strike in the upper reaches. I mean upper reaches the strike zone. Montessi beefing now with Dale Scott. Well, he's a rookie. You're not going to get it the benefit of the doubt for sure. They still do that. Got to earn a little bit. Now the one two. Swing and a miss. He dusted him. One away. Time for a game break now in Matt Shepard. Yeah, the Simo a little tease, huh? Simo teasing us. Simo's working on something good for the postgame show. Mondesi came up in an era where the right fielders that were playing the game at that time had some of the best arms in all of baseball. Rockets. Guys like Jesse Barfield were playing the outfield at the time. Man, those guys could really throw. Paolo Orlando, the batter. Hey uh, Rod, did you notice after that strikeout of Mondesi, it looked like JV had a little score to settle there. Well, he did blow him away with a 93-94, and then for good measure, he climbed the ladder with 95 to blow the youngster away. Yeah, he definitely didn't like that dinger. But a little bit of respect for Mondesi in this series. Uh, played very well, like you said, done it with his legs, done it with his bat. So I don't want to take him too lightly. He's a lot of skills. This Kansas City team is very athletic. We talked about this kid last night to Orlando. Uh, this kid really didn't even start playing baseball until he got into professional baseball. He rode the bushes for nine years and finally made a major league roster last year in Kansas City. And this year he's been one of their more pleasant surprises. Now JV with the 2-1 to Orlando. He'll drive this one to center field. Collins on the move. They're two gone. Just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one, look forward to Miller time later in tonight's game, brought to you by Miller Light. Jared Saltilamaki with a home run to dead center field, getting the Tigers on the board. Still trail 2 1. Here is Chesler Cuthbert. What are you laughing at over there? Here's a high fly ball to right center. And it's going to be caught by Martinez. Jamie coming back with a 1, 2, 3, 6.
Tigers play the Boston Red Sox this Friday at 7 10 p.m. plus a 16 ounce Miller Lite for as low as $19. It's the Friday night party package. Visit Tigers.com or call 866 66 Tiger. Danny Duffy back to the hill and Tyler Collins leads it off. It'll be Collins, Kinsler, and Casey McGee in the bottom of the sixth. Collins trying to jump him right there. First pitch fastball. Kind of guess strike in those situations. Hope that he gets it right down the middle and you can center it. And Collins looks at a ball outside, getting the start in center field tonight, despite the fact that the Royals had a lefty on the mound. Tyler popped up his first at bat. Got some speed. He's got maybe could bump one down there. They'll drag the pull bunt. Drag it down to first. Hey, good call. He pushed it instead. One and two. Now I'd like to go the other way generally with the left hander because they have a hard time getting over to the first base fair foul line. So I'd like to pull it this way. You get it by this guy, then the pitcher has to go on and beat you to first base, but Tyler goes the other way. Had a pretty good setup to get, get that butt down. Of course, if we were in, where is it, Seattle? That would have been a fair ball, wouldn't it? Yeah, exactly. Rod, they had the foul line so sloped. It was unbelievable. It would have stayed fair? Oh, yeah. That had been about to the pitcher's mound. That one missed inside, two and two. We had a shot, actually. Who bunted that ball? Uh, there's somebody bunted the ball and that we actually got it had a shot our cameraman caught the grounds crew giving each other knuckles <laughs> <laughs> here's the 2 2 to Collins and a foul straight back out of play it's pretty good at bat here by Collins especially uh, against a tough left hander and Danny Duffy he's hanging in there nicely the one thing about Duffy very seldom does he use his change up to left handed batters because usually that pitch fades right down in their happy zone. So, pretty much against left handers, he's the only fastball slider. Fouled out of play. And that's one of the luxuries you have as a left hander. It doesn't make it any easier to hit Duffy, but you can pretty much eliminate one pitch, and that would be the changeup. So, yeah. everything that you're going to get, for the most part, is going to be hard stuff. That's and why Collins has been able to foul off a number of pitches. Yeah, hopefully, he doesn't throw that slider that's down and away. Comes that heater. And he got on strikes. One out. That'll bring up Ian Kinsler. Rod wanted to get your thoughts on the trade that was consummated right before the start of the game tonight. Well, it's tough to see Avilas go. He was a true pro, uh, but he was batting 210 here. And you look at Eric Ibar, you look at his numbers, they really don't fascinate you all that much, batting just 242. But since the All Star break, he was hitting well over 300. He's a switch hitter, he's got some speed, and he could help the Tigers manufacture some runs in some very close games. He's got the bunt game, he's got the hit and run game, he can steal your base, and he's also a really good defender. So I like Ibar coming to the Tigers roster. Yeah, I would agree. And uh, it tells you a little bit about the urgency that's starting on the Tigers squad. Iglesias, maybe he's out 15 days, but uh, they just were not comfortable with the team as they had it right now, and they felt Ibar was a upgrade, so Alavila went out and got him. And I agree with Rod, good move. You know, for instance, in a game like this, and excuse me, Mario, in a game like this, this is where Ibar would be at his best because he would wreak some havoc on the defenders. He would he would draw everybody in because he has the ability to bunt. And then he also had the ability when they did come in to slap the ball by the infielders. Mike Sosha, I think, used him beautifully when he was playing for the Los Angeles Angels. He had really good career for the Angels. Ibar did. Yeah, I agree with that, Rod. He really could create in tight games, which might be a little bit of an aspect right now this team can use. Yeah, played every infield position as well. And like you say, he could slap it through that between that third baseman. You get that third baseman in that leaves a big hole there between the shortstop and the third baseman. Ability to get on base, get hit and run with him as well. Wasn't it Ibar Mario that butted for a base hit against Justin Verlander or attempted to butt for against Verlander? He still had a no hitter. I think it was that game that he was pitching against uh, Weaver. Weaver, that classic game yep. here at Comerica Park a few years back. Guillen hit the home run. <laughs> How about this one? Remember, Sosha butted him for a suicide squeeze in the playoffs against Boston and it, and it failed. Yes, remember I remember that too. And I asked Mike Sosha if he'd do it again. He said, the best butter in the league 
Absolutely. He had said everything was right, but that's the kind of confidence that Soch had in him. One out walk for Kinsler. And bring up Casey McGee now. Tying run is on. If you're Ian Kinsler over on first base, you're probably not going to steal. Uh, with uh, Duffy on the mound and Perez behind the plate, he's one of the best throwers in our sport. But you can anticipate uh, maybe a breaking ball down, maybe a change up down, which would allow you uh, to get yourself in the scoring position should Duffy bounce one. How about a hit and run here, Rod? It's, I think with this, it take, uh, takes some guts to do it, but if you get in a good count. Well, McGee can handle the bat. He's a pro. He can put it in play. Got that hole over there as uh, Hosmer is holding Kinsler on base. And McGee looks at the ball high, 1 1. But this, is, this is not something that the Tigers do much of. You see this got a bigger hole over here because of the holding on base there. But, uh, you know, when you're trying to manufacture runs, you do consider options such as hitting and running. Snap throw back. Ooh, we just got back in there. But well, they're looking. Yeah, Hosmer right immediately said, take a look at that. It's a flat footed throw there by Duffy. I just love the way that Hosmer allows the ball to travel all the way to the bag, and all he has to do once he grabs it in his glove is apply the tag. You see so many first basemen on that pickoff play from the pitcher, they reach out to get the baseball, and then they have to reach back, and therefore they don't put the tag on it. But look how far he lets that ball travel. He's out, he's out front of the bag as well. So uh, again, just did a little different positioning. He's smart. He's a very good defender. That's just one of the little things that he does. And Dale Scott right there on the left, the crew chief. The Royals are challenging the call on the field, which was safe at first base. See, look at the stop it. Look how far out in front of that bag that Hosmer is. So obviously, he's going to get the ball quicker, and he's tagging towards the back of the body. Gabby, I think that might be to deceive Kinsler, to be perfectly honest with you. You see a first baseman that's standing out in front of the bag like that. As a base runner, you're thinking to yourself, well, he's not going to pick here. But I think that's all part of the game playing uh, that Hosmer likes to play at first base. Of course, he's also very good at giving Salvador Perez signs when he wants him to pick down to first base. Hosmer's one of the best in the game. Well, again, we're going to take a look at this move right here. Kinsler is venturing off. I don't know if he's peeking in or not. This is a quick step off move. You should have done your scouting for sure. They should know that he's going to do that. See the step off. And way in front is Hosmer. That's pretty close. He's out. Dale Scott signals out, and so Kinsler is picked off first base. That hurts. Two gone. Looks like Ian was just getting ready to take another step off. Perfectly timed by Danny Duffy. And again, just another trade of a good developing pitcher. As part of your trade, he's obviously worked on that as a very, very quick and uh, deceptive move. Gets Kinsler. Swing and a miss. One and two now on Casey McGee, who fly to center field on a ball that Paulo Orlando had to run down in right center. And then he bounced out of the second. That's the fifth base runner that uh, Duffy has picked off this year. High fly ball. Will be playable for Lorenzo Kane, who's been busy tonight, and that'll take care of the Tigers. Uh, Rod, thanks again, buddy. We'll see you on both game. All right, fellas. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. See you tomorrow. All right.
Global's greater coverage of baseball. Some news and notes from around the league. Charlie Blackman, man, he's been red hot for the Rockies. Yeah, it's smoking hot, even though even if it is in Colorado. Bartolo Colon, first career walk in 500th game. <laughs> That's from the offensive side. Now about Eovaldi, he's stuffed this season. The injuries just keep piling up all around the major leagues. Nathan Evaldi is second Tommy John surgery, which means he'll miss all of next year. That's amazing. It used to be unusual to have a Tommy John surgery. Now they're having two and three. Yeah. A lot of guys are also throwing over 100 miles an hour now. One ball, one strike on Lorenzo Kane. It'll be Kane, Hosmer, Morales, middle of the lineup for the Royals. 2 1, KC in the lead. Verlander back to the hill. Pitch count in pretty good shape. Off the end of the bat, foul. I mentioned JV threw 112 in his last start, the most he has thrown in a start this year. But uh, his pitch count has been in good shape most of the night. He's just given up two solo homers. He came into this inning, went at 78 through six innings. That's a pretty good ratio. About 12 an inning, well under the 15 pitches you're trying to stay under an inning. Strike called, and he got him looking. Six strikeouts now for Verlander. Kane doesn't agree. Again, he's got that two seamer. Watch it. He's going to run back on that outside corner. Dale Sight. Uh, Scott is biting. Gets the call and Kane can't believe it. Kane thought it was the touch <laughs> outside. <laughs> well, I remember those times. Huh? Funny to me up here, not to him. <laughs> Owen won the count on Hosmer. You usually get a couple cat calls on the way back to the dugout when that happens. A couple extra. They see that reaction. Ooh, big swing there on a fastball up and out of the zone. Hosmer is 0 for 2, couple of ground balls. Hosmer and Morales, the middle of their lineup, batting around 200 and under 200 each since the All Star break. There's a high, towering drive to center field. Collins going back to the track, to the wall, looks up, and it's gone. Two of the longer home runs you will see have been hit in the ball game tonight. That one off the bat of Eric Hosmer. It's a third home run given up by JV tonight. Man, he got all of that one. Yeah, well, he tried to throw the same pitch the previous pitch that he blew it by him. Doesn't quite get it in there this time. This one's out over the plate. The, first, the previous was inside more. Watch the extension. That's some big levers there. Shorten the swing up a little bit and it's gone. Here's Morales. Kendry's 0 for 2, strike out and fly out. All left handed batters have hit three home runs tonight against JV. Hosmer's homer is his 16th of the year. Salt Lamaki's home run went 437, Hosmer's went 443. Here's the 0-2. The other uh, two of the home runs were on fastballs, and the one to Gordon was something off speed. That's frustrating. JV's got the experience to make sure he gets out of this inning with no further damage. The Royals have three runs tonight on three hits. Homers by Mondesi, Gordon, and Hosmer. Tigers have only two hits against Danny Duffy, so as we expected, pitching in tall order tonight. Three hits, all home runs. Tigers have two, one of them home run. Infield playing to pull. The shift is on against Morales. Now Justin's 2-2 is thwarted as 
Morales is given time by Dale Scott. Just thinking back to that home run that Hosmer hit. You know, you don't see many lefties hit fastballs at the top of the zone like that. That's impressive. He, seen him do that before. He's got a, a unique ability to hit the high pitch from the left side. Morales doing the same right there. Doesn't connect. Well, Hosmer can smile now, but he was two for his previous 20. And he's given the Royals a three to one lead. And Morales pops it up left side of the infield for Machado. Two gone. Here's our high speed pitch brought to you by Xfinity. 95 the high 77 the low that last pitch to Morales was where he was trying to throw to Hosmer got it in a bit and uh, could not get extended Morales however missed the spot with Hosmer and he did get extended. Here is Salvador Perez. And Perez 0 for 2 in this game. He swings and misses 0 and 1. Well, he's throwing a lot of sliders and breaking balls to Salvador Perez tonight. Keeping it down and away. Perez came in batting 469 against Verlander. Here's the 0 1 pitch. The fly ball to center, not deep, coming in Collins. And that'll end the inning. However, the home run by Hosmer has given the Royals a three to one lead. Coming up, the McLaren Health Plan seventh inning stretch. That cover their body. Well, Danny Duffy might have a few of those spots under his jersey because he's a big fan of the ancient alternative medicine use technique called cupping. Now, cupping is actually where you, you cup, um, it, it pulls up a suction cup, basically the fascia on your uh, underneath your skin. It's basically connective tissue that surrounds the muscles. That's what fascia is. And cupping actually breaks fascia up. So he uses this technique particularly regularly. Unable to make the play out in left field, and the Tigers will get the leadoff man on. Gordon is really good out there in left, just couldn't corral that one. Looking trying to make a good catch right here, but it comes out of his glove. That's when it happens. Oh, they might argue right here, but no, no, you've got to make a move to take it out on your own. Just popped out right there as he turned over. Kind of a continuous motion. It's good. It's, uh, that's uh, not a caught ball. 
That'll bring up J.D. Martinez now, tying run to the plate here. Leadoff man out of the seventh, three to one, Royals lead. And J.D. looks at the ball outside, 1-0. J.D. is due. J. Up is due. I feel like we're going to get something out of it. I think J.V. is thinking about pitching a complete game. Ground ball, diving stop at third by Cuthbert, goes to second, and that's all they'll get. That ball was headed down the line. It was smoked, and Cuthbert a diving play. I'll tell you what, they have really laid the leather here tonight. You're right, look at, look at here. This looks like it's going to be down into the corner. Cuthbert gets up. Bondesi cannot make the turn. That's just a reaction and a dive. It's a great play. Here's the transfer, he flips it out. There we showed last night where the hands were, the difference between right. Kinsler. Yeah, that's, that's good, uh, good one. Ian puts his hand in, takes it out. The young kid, they're just flipping it out, and it costs him. Ball one to Upton. One on, one out. Upton in the ball game, fly out, strike out. That's his bad move. You want to stay close for sure, especially down by two runs. We know he's got a good pickoff move. He's learned the hard way. Cannot afford that again. Duffy picked off Kinsler earlier in the game. In fact, last inning. Here's the 1 0. Swing and a miss. He got away from Perez. Perez going to gun down to second, not in time. Oh, how about that? Great jump by JD and he gets down there. I didn't think that was far enough for Perez. Took a chance and good calculation. He's in there safely. I think it worries me about look at the JD slides here. A lot of guys you watch how they slide over the base. Good read here. He decides to go. He's running good. He slides here. You got to stay on that base. The infielders are taught to leave that glove on there. They didn't used to call it ever because there was no replay. Wild pitch. One ball and one strike. And Jay up shoots it in the air to center. It's going to be playable though. Orlando sizing it up. And Martinez going to tag. Here comes the throw to third base. It's off target. Gone. Let's check back in with Kristen now to finish up that story on uh, the uh, ancient, what, cupping is it called? <laughs> Alternative medicine. Thank you. But, well, I, I just call it, you know, a, a treatment that you get in the training room, but cupping is, is something that, you know, not only the Olympians are doing, you'll see it all across Major League Baseball. Ian Kennedy, last night starter, is a big fan, as well as Danny Duffy. They say they just use the technique regularly to really help break up any soreness after you know they're particularly fatigued after an outing the um, cupping it what it really does is it promotes blood flow and it breaks up the fascia which is connective tissue that surrounds the muscles so it helps these guys speed up recovery which as you can imagine is really important if you're a, a rotation guy and a starter pitcher like Danny Duffy is. Right, Kristen thanks maybe an ancient therapy but uh, I think it hadn't come to the forefront until like right now. Here is James McCann with two outs. Big rip by James. So one. they've been using cupping for many years in the game. Right. In fact, uh, you know, this is more of a, I guess, uh, recovery technique they use. Of course, they've been using the preventative measures with the other cups that have been, been worn for years oh, for and the years. Love. That's preventative <laughs> cupping. Especially if you're a pitcher or a catcher. Or a catcher. What's so funny Pre about that? Preventative cupping. A little bit outside, one ball, one strike. Is that humorous? Sorry. However, James McCann here trying to tie it up. One one count against Duffy. McCann in the ball game, couple of fly balls. 
And a swing and a miss. One and two on James. Now, we showed all those change-ups being used earlier in the game against all the Tiger hitters, so it's got to be in the back of your mind right now. Now that fastball is playing up even better. 94 miles an hour right there, right by James. Of course, Salty hit the fastball out. You think maybe he's going to the change up here. Certainly have to guard against it. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Oh. That is four strikeouts for Duffy. Tiger strand a man. Tigers baseball presented by Bell Tire. Game summary, Tigers trail 3-1, all home runs pretty much, three uh, in the bottom of the third, Raul Mondesi. Then you got one right there by Alex uh, Gordon. Then Salty makes it 2-1. Tigers are still down by one, and then Eric Cosmo in the last inning gets the high heater in the seventh. There's been some long ones, two long ones to center field. And the score stands right now, Tigers trail, top of the eighth. JV still going strong though. Only three hits. And he has thrown 93 pitches, so he's out there uh, again here for the eighth inning. He's got bottom three. Gordon leads it off. And you look at a bender that drops in for a strike. So you got Gordon Escobar and Mondesi here. Seven, eight, nine. Tigers down three to one. We're playing in the top of the eighth. And two of the home runs came from this. Uh, two of these bottom, uh, the number. Seven in the number nine hitter, Gordon and Mondesi. Gordon's home run was his ninth of the year, extending his hitting streak to seven straight. He's on a breaking ball. It's always interesting to watch if you get, uh, a guy gives a home run up, what he's how he's going to attack him going to the change up there. You hear so much about how Alex Gordon has struggled this year, yet he hits the home run. So uh, even right. though guys uh, are struggling, they're still. Locked in, mentally strong, and uh, believe that they're going to do the job. Gordon with the home run tonight. It'll sail outside two and one. Justin now has gone into the seventh inning in 15 of his last 19 starts. Lefties came in batting just 208 against him this year, but this lefty here, Gordon, got him for the long ball. Uh, Justin steps off. Looks a little frustrated there, doesn't he? He'll regroup. Missed it inside. Ball's off the plate. Nicely placed. Couldn't get Gordon to bite. Again, he tried to throw the breaking ball and the home run in the bottom of the fifth. Caught too much plate, so JV being very cautious here on the corners. Right off the mask of McCann, three and two.
Five plus strikeouts in 19 consecutive starts for JV. Six punch outs tonight. Let's see, fourth longest active streak in the major leagues. Here's the 3 2. Check swing roller toward third. McGee, a couple of steps to his right. Oh, he threw it away. Saw Tilamaki was unable to pick it, and Gordon will go to second. Well, it appeared routine. We'll see what happened here if it was, was uh, Salt to the or the throw. Yeah, the throw wasn't exactly on target, but uh, maybe Salt should have had this right here. Hasn't played a lot of first base. You can see just uh, off the end of the glove. When your Mickey is not in the lineup, this is another one of the things that uh, maybe sometimes you take for granted. Salty's been behind the plate for all but what, four games that he's played this year. This fourth game at first base. JV's uh, going to have a situation here. Going to have to pitch through it. E3 on the play. I think you make a great point. Sometimes you do take Cabrera's defense for granted. And here's the key to that for me. And I looked when McGee picked that ball up. Alex Gordon was hustling all the way down the line. That always makes you rush it just a little bit. So maybe that throw. Is rushed and it's just not quite on target, and then causes the air. 100 pitches for JV. Look at the ratio. 73 percent strikes. First air of the ball game puts Gordon down at second with nobody out. Escobar fly out, ground out. He yanks it foul down the third base line. Went both ways, hadn't he? To the right, to the left. 0 oh 2. Uh, JV's going to have to try and get a chase here. Escobar is the only Royal that has played in every game this year. This guy's been uh, an Iron Man of sorts for them. A very demanding shortstop position. Here's the 0 oh 2. And it's slowing away. One ball and two strikes. Escobar pretty durable. Leads shortstops 127 consecutive games played. It's an active streak. One and two on Alcides Escobar. Outside he laid off. Hurtlander tried to get him to go chase, and the count goes two and two. Yeah, it's two pitches in a row after the 0-2 count. He's trying to get him to chase. Escobar not biting. There's Mondesi waiting on deck. Bruce Rondon heating up in the Tigers pen. It's the first time tonight JV has pitched from the stretch. And we're in the eighth inning, and he's trailing three to one. It's because the only hits he's given up tonight have been homers, three solo shots. And all of a sudden, now the count has gone three and two to Escobar. Well, if he walks Escobar, you know what's going to happen next, right? With Modesty coming up, they get a bunt. He's going to lay one down. And a line drive base hit to left field. Gordon waited to see it go through. He will stop at third. And now on his way to second, throw cut off, and he'll just take second base. Escobar with a heads up play. You know, uh, I watched Jab do that a couple times in the last couple games. And Escobar, a very aggressive runner. He reads Jab, just kind of come in and take for granted. Then he throws it into the cutoff man. And Escobar alertly on to second base. If JV tried to get a slider. Escobar got on it. You're going to watch JF come in. Watch Escobar right here. He's reading, and as soon as the throw goes to the cutoff man, on to second. The Tigers are going to have to play the infield in now. So Mondesi will step up there. Single second on the throw. Infield in. And a ball inside 1-0 to Mondesi. 
He's a good bunter. We know that. It's also Maki having a chat with Kinsler. They're talking about positioning down there at first base and on the right side of the infield. Well, he's got to come here. If he bunts, he's got to get over to first base. Ian Kinsler does. Popped him up. McCann coming back, but he's going to head back into the seats. One ball and one strike. He's giving a lot of signs there. I don't think they would squeeze here, but. Mike Jershley, their third base coach. See, why does he take a little extra look? When you're on the other side, you're always looking to look at faces. You put a play like that on, sometimes it's telltale. If I salty, I might be in a little more. Ball high, two and one. JV leaving the balls up high, trying to pitch him at the top of the zone. Struck him out on those pitches last at bat. So what you're saying is uh, you would even look at the hitter's face to see if there might be uh, a tipping point there. Well you you watch the manager and then comes the third base coach and then you watch the. The receiver of the signs which is Mondesi right here just to see if anybody does something a little differently you get nervous sometimes so you wonder if they're on it. Swing and a miss. JV's going to keep it up there. Certainly doesn't want him to hit it on the ground. Kind of up at the top of the zone and towards the outside. Just give him everything he's got. 109 pitches. Inside, backed him out of there now, three and two. And JV reaching back there. So the pitch count elevating now on Verlander trying to get through this eighth inning pitching around an air. Here's the three two. Honestly hammers one foul. He's quick inside. Yeah, he is. But I don't think away as much. Seems to have a real short swing keeps his hands in tight watch him keep them in. Got that down. See, JV seemed to have success away and up. Kind of hard to cover the whole plate. Spread out, making sure that he stays on the ball. He walked him. It's going to be it. They sign balls, puts Mondesi on, and loads the bases with nobody out. And. Here comes Brad. Hasn't made a sign yet or signal. If he goes out there. JB's going to talk him out of it. Yeah, there he goes. Made, he made the call. So Verlander with a total of 112 pitches. And he will give up the baseball. He will leave with the bases loaded in a three to one ball game. Wall side windows pitching change. Nice round of applause for Justin.
Tigers T-shirt Fridays continue this Friday. The Tigers battle the Red Sox at 7:10 p.m. Get a game ticket plus a Justin Verlander emoji T-shirt when you purchase exclusively at Tigers.com/slash T-shirt Fridays. The Tigers have gone to the bullpen now. Here's Bruce Rondon. Bruce showing the ball pretty good lately. 19th game, ERA down at 4.08. The WHIP way down below one. 21 strikeouts, only five walks, and he's got a tall task here. Bases loaded, nobody out. Paulo Orlando, the batter. Orlando is 0 for 3 in this game. Swings and misses right through the first one. Orlando punched out twice against Verlander. We're talking about Justin Verlander, 5 and 0 in his last eight. Detroit is. But not a lot of run support where I was looking at just about 3.3 runs per game and over that eight game period. I was hoping that maybe he could have a little breather tonight but that wasn't the case. Tigers got to wiggle their way out of this jam right here. Of course they have six outs left to take the lead. Well, Rondon has uh, given up just one earned run in his last eight appearances but a mess to clean up here with nobody out. And Orlando swings tips it into the glove for strike two. 98 miles an hour. A little different look. Gordon Escobar and Montesi on the bases. All Justin can do now is watch and hope the bullpen can try and wiggle out of this. Rondon, a long look at McCann. Swing and a miss. He struck him out, and that's a start. Tough night for Orlando. Yeah, uh, Bruce Rondon coming into his own right here. This is a magic moment right here. He needs to get out of it. Let's take a look at the pitch by pitch. Blows him away right there with a big heater. Then another, and he starts going to the slider. Quick order right there. JV applauds. Now a double play will do it. The Tigers middle infielders are back in double play depth. Take the strike out as well. Here is Cuthbert. Fouled off 0 and 1. Good pitch right there. 87 mile an hour slider looking for 98. <laughs> three runs on four hits for the Royals a run on three hits for the Tigers. Well, if you're any fielder right now, you got to make sure that you know what you're going to do if the ball's hit to you. No margin for error. That is popped up. Shallow center field. Kinsler going back. He'll make the. Oh, he dropped the ball. Throw will come into third base, and it's wide, and he got him. He kept his foot in the bag. A run will score, though, for the Royals. They're going to check that as well. Well, Tyler Collins coming in hard. Ball's a full swing, hit off the end of the bat. He and Kinsler running out hard. Seem to be a bit of communication. Hard to communicate right here. See Ian maybe not trusting it all the way. Got turned around a little bit, but alertly picks it up immediately. Gordon, Gordon tags, doesn't have to. Immediately throws the ball to the third. McGee with a good play catches it is on the base. They do get Escobar at third base so they get an out out of it. Casey McGee with a good play right here. Oh it hit him. Oh it did. It hit him. Good job. That's good concentration right there. So it's a four to one ball game now first and second two outs. And Lorenzo Cain stands in. That's going to bounce in well in front of the plate. One ball, no strikes on Lorenzo Kane. Kane is 0 for 3. 
Struck out in his last debate against Verlander. Ground ball, fair ball down the line at third base. This will get another run in. It'll be extra bases for Kane, who pulls in with a double. And it's now 5 1 KC. Kane, an RBI double. He's going to bring Osmus out. Come with the lefty. See Kane very quick inside right there. Keeps his hands in as well. Casey McGee just off the line. He takes a dive and can't come up with it. Just out of his reach. It's the uh, second straight night where Kane has come up with a late RBI hit. That'll be it for Rondone. Another well side windows pitching change. Kyle Ryan coming into the bullpen. First on Friday, the Bronx Bombers clash with Mike Trout of the Angels at 9.30 Eastern. Then on Saturday, the Mets battle Buster Posey and the Giants at 3.30 Eastern. You can catch both games live on Fox Sports Go as well. Now Kyle Ryan comes in to face Eric Hosmer with runners at second and third. And Hosmer sends a ground ball up the middle. Machado is there and plays it on one hop. One pitch is all Ryan needed to end the inning. They get two more and we go to the bottom of the eighth.
loaded and Chelsler Cuthbert hits a ball and you're going to look right here. We're, we're going to stop it right here. Ian's going out. Collins is coming. You want Collins to catch this ball. He needs to call him off. Go ahead and play it. Ian's peekabooing over his shoulder. Even if Kinsler catches this ball, they're going to score a run. So that's just a, a play that would have made different. That would have stopped that from being a run for sure because we know Collins has got a pretty good arm. They're going to stop it. You'd have bases loaded one out. Of course, in that scenario there, Kinsler got the out, and then a two-bagger by Lorenzo Cain scored, scored another run. 5-1 ball game. And Saltilamaki leading it off here in the bottom of the eighth. Uh, it's been uh, tough defensively tonight for the Tigers. Although Salty put the Tigers on the board with a run in the fifth inning. With a home run. Here's the 0-2. That'll bounce in. Look out. That one got the home plate umpire, Dale Scott. Let's take a look at Big Boy's big play of the game. Salty in the fifth goes deep center field. That made the Tigers trailing 2-1 at the time. However, down now 5-1. Perez out to the mound to give Scott a few more beats to try and uh, have that pain leave his arm. There's bees in there? There's bees right now. They're going. Zzz. You know what he's going to have to do? What? Some preventative, yep. Yeah. Cupping. Preventive cupping. One and two. Get some therapy. Now, they really they do that all around at the big leagues. It is a, a technique used by many. And Salty wouldn't chase. Five one Royals lead. Salty lock in Machado and Collins do up here. Here's the two two. And it's just a bit outside. Definitely trying to, try to get that call right there. Definitely off the plate. Dale Scott holding true. Talking to himself. Did you see that? He said, come on. Tigers will take a walk right here. And they'll get one. Leadoff man is on. Well, let's take a look at Danny Duffy. Only three hits to the Tigers. This is his fifth outing of eight plus innings pitched this season out of his 18th start. One outing of eight plus from 2011 to 15. That's 80 starts. So coming into his own, he's been very tough for the Tigers tonight. Of course, the Tigers are missing Miggy as well. This lineup is beat up. Castellanos is out. Miggy's out. We got to find a way. Machado looks at a strike on the outer edge. Machado, since he's been up here in this stint from Toledo, lots of off-speed pitches he's seen. Lots of curveballs, lots of change-ups. Dixon is 0 for 2 in the game. Now it's 0 2. Machado was an all star last year at, uh, in the minor leagues. And AAA this year was having a pretty solid season. 42 RBI, stole 17 bases, 266 batting average. His calling card has been his glove. And Iglesias right now on the disabled list. You're talking about hitting right there. You see Iglesias, he's going to get the breaking ball. It'll bounce in and away. And that'll go all the way into the camera well. So move the runner up. Duffy at 97 pitches. Appears he's tiring a bit. Lead off walk. Tried to throw that breaking ball. It was about a 50 footer. Maybe 55. Royals these days don't have that sixth inning covered, seventh inning covered, eighth inning, and ninth inning covered with the all the injuries they've had, Ho Chaver and Wade Davis. But they still have Kelvin Herrera and Joaquin Soria, and there's Soria warming up right now. The well, Tigers should know Soria very well. He pitched here. Seems like his skills have diminished a little bit, but uh, he's got a lot of knowledge there, knows how to get outs. Ground ball to third. Right there is Cuthbert. Machado is out, one gone. 
Follow Tigers Baseball Live with the MLB.com at Bat App. Stay up to the moment at any moment with game day, live game video highlights, StatCast news, and more. Download MLB.com at Bat, the number one app for live baseball on your phone or tablet. Looking around the league, Cleveland's up 2 1 over the White Sox in the bottom of the seventh on my app right there. Cleveland came in leading the Tigers by five. And the Tigers trailing Boston. And the wild card. Here's the 1 0 pitch. Two balls and no strikes. Duffy now has reached 100. Royal starting pitching entering tonight last 11 games an ERA of 289 and Duffy has been good tonight. Collins 0 for 2. Tyler's had some really good at bats against Duffy. See if he can get, get it going tonight. Get a line drive here. Struck out after a lengthy at bat his last at bat. Tigers have just not been able to put anything together. Like to get a guy or two on, hit a home run, or just keep the line moving. Something they've done well all year. That'll get foul off the end of the bat. Two balls, two strikes. Top of the order lurking, Ian Kinsler. Ian's do as well. Get another on, have Ian go yard. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Collins 0 for 3 now tonight. You know, Tyler, uh, he did the same thing to him last at bat. was going away and then kind of came in on him. Struck out the last two at bats. Here comes Dan Yost. It's going to be it. Fifth strikeout, and that's going to be the last strikeout of the night for Duffy, who will depart. Joaquin Soria coming into face Ian Kinsler. And so a pitching change here in the eighth. Tigers down 5 1. We'll be back. Services sponsor of Fox Sports Detroit. Bell Tire, get the lowest tire price, period. Bell Tire. And by Chevrolet, more than you expect, more less than you imagine. Tigers trail 5 1 as we get here in the bottom of the eighth. Two down. Ian Kinsler, the batter. Danny Duffy's night is over. Fish a darn good game. Seven and two thirds innings, three hits and run. Five strikeouts and two walks. Joaquin Soria now comes into the game. 
51 strikeouts, 21 walks. Gettable. See, look at the moon up there, Mario. I feel like something's going to happen special here. Oh, yeah, it's trying to bust through the clouds. So I think that's a waxing gibbous. Waxing gibbous. <laughs> kind of a cool moon. It's been a while since we've talked clouds and moons and all that kind of stuff. Well, it's right there in front of us. Need a refresher. That's the phase when the moon is more than 50% illuminated, but not yet a full moon. Oh, that's right. Yeah, now it's so all it's coming back. That. Here's the 0-1. Breaking ball. Look out. It'll get back in the seats and pinball around. Sorry, coming right after Kinsler. So the count is 0-2 on Ian. McGee would be next. 5-1, the Royals lead. Missed it up high. One ball, two strikes. More action in the Tigers bullpen. Mark Lowe warming up. Looks like he'll be coming in for the night. Tigers down 5 1. Find a way, get Salty in. Never know. We've seen it happen before. In this ballpark this year. Salatomaki led off by reaching with a walk and then advanced in a wild pitch. Yeah, I'm just asking myself if we got a couple of runners on, could Miggy pitch hit? What do you think? I think he probably I could, but I don't think he will. I, I would agree with that 100%. Just after talking to Brad today, I think that uh, he's going to stick true to his. Uh, First intentions. Swing and a miss. Kinsler strikes out to end the inning. No runs to walk, one left. We go to the ninth. All right, Chef, thank you. Uh, right now, the Tigers have some work to do, but the uh, business at hand is getting the Royals out here in the top of the ninth. It'll be Mark Lowe. On the season, actually, Mark Lowe's been throwing the ball very well the last 30 days. It doesn't seem like it. He had a rough start to the Tiger season. The ERA on the way down. Whip as well. These are over the year, but he's been throwing the ball much better. 36 strikeouts, 16 walks, and the uh, Tigers right now, you need Mark Lowe to. Shut down the Kansas City Royals and hope something magical happens in the bottom of the ninth. Tigers can score, win the game. Kenry's Morales will lead it off here for the Royals, and he drives the first pitch into the seats in right field. Wow. Another home run tonight for the Royals for Morales, his 20th of the year. 
boy. Fourth home run of the night for KC. Six hits, four homers for the Royals. Looks like Mark Lowe's trying to get a first pitch strike, and Kendrick Morales just jumps all over it. Another home run by a left hander as well. That's all home runs hit by left handers for the Royals. Out over the plate. Here's some unruly fans. Here's a ball hit high and deep to right center field. It's going to hang up though. A lot of room out there for JD. Perez is out. One gone now for Alex Gordon. Six runs on six hits for KC. A run on three hits for the Tigers. Can you hear the fan there? I can. He's a little upset. <laughs> So will that make him throw better? No, but it'll make the fan feel better, I think. Oh, okay. Gordon has the homer tonight. A solo shot off JV back in the fifth. <laughs> Here's the ball high and away. Gordon also reaching on the air by the first baseman Salt to Lamacchia, which opened the doors in the eighth. Tap foul behind home plate. One ball, one strike. Gordon now with nine homers. He extended his hitting streak to seven straight with that homer in the fifth inning. Low with the 1 1. Ripped right to the second baseman, Kinsler. Two gone. Here's the 1 800 call Sam call the game. Well, the Tigers have had a lot of injuries. The first wave that came up, you're looking at Moya, Collins, Matt Boyd, Norris Fulmer. Well, they're all here right now. Well, who's the second wave? I just projected Machado, who just showed up. Alex Presley, an outfitter, has got big league experience. John Hicks, if we had a catcher problem. Anthony Ghost is getting it going a little bit down there in double-a uh, and Buck Farmer I think would be a guy that uh, they might call up if we had more pitching problems although Alavila Vila shows you that he will go out of the organization from this point on as they did by getting Ibar tonight Escobar the batter now with two outs if you missed it earlier tonight Ibar comes over from the Atlanta Braves Mike Avilas and minor league catcher Kate Zavicki go the other way Here's the 0 1. Busting inside, one ball, one strike. Escobar single in three at bats. Tigers will have McGee, Martinez, Martinez in the bottom of the ninth. One and two. We got a play by play guy there, don't we? At least we know I've lost his voice by the time he gets home. Low ready with the one two. Off the plate two balls two strikes. Raul Mondesi waiting on deck. Looks like an exciting young player doesn't he. A lot of speed and uh, as you mentioned he can turn on a pitch inside as well. That's popped up. It'll be Salt Telemachia to end the inning. However another run in and the home run by Morales. We go to the bottom of the night.
Collins, Modesty, Gordon, Hosmer, Morales. Salty hit one into the bushes in center field in the fifth inning. Danny Duffy, Gibby tonight was really good. Uh, he was good just as advertised. Uh, we know he's got good stuff, but uh, better than we've ever seen him. He's on a roll, and uh, the Tigers, of course, uh, their lineup has changed quite a bit. Miggy out of the lineup, uh, but they didn't find a way so far. They're going to have to do it against Peter Moylan. He's in the game last night. Little right-hander, throws uh, about three-quarter sidearm, I would call it. 26 strikeouts, 11 walks, whip of 138. That's walks plus hits. And very tough on the right-handed hitters. KC McGee will lead it off. Tigers need base runners pronto. There's a strike called on McGee. Victor Martinez, then J.D. Martinez. McGee is hitless in three at bats. A couple of fly balls. That'll sail outside. One ball, one strike from Moylan. No, sometimes you take a pitch, you take a strike when you get in this situation down by four or five runs here in the bottom of the ninth. However, with a guy like Moylan, who's tough on righties, uh, I don't know that you'd want to give him a strike. You want to get a good pitch. That's nasty right there down at the bottom of the zone. On deck is Victor. Swing and a miss. Yikes. It's a pretty tight, tight slider right there. It didn't look like McGee saw it. It's too late. Here's the upcoming matchup presented by Michigan Office of Highway Safety Planning. Tomorrow is Jordano Ventura and Anibal Sanchez. And Ventura, the hard thrower, 8 9 in the air, 4 6 0. Oh. Anibal Sanchez had a tough outing his last outing. It looked like he was getting it together in his previous starts. The Tigers would be counting heavily on Sanchez for the beauty tomorrow. Ibar will probably be here tomorrow. Uh, Stephen Moya will be here tomorrow. I think he's here already tonight. We can't find him in the dugout yet. Victor rolls one to Hosmer. Moylan covers for the out, and there are two gone. Every game counts. The Tigers host the Red Sox this Sunday at 1.10 p.m. Sunday Kids Day. All kids 14 and under receive a free, free Nick Castellanos poster. Visit Tigers.com, call 866-66-TIGER. Or if you'd like, buy tickets with no fees at the Comerica Park box office. Find Moya. There, there he is. He is here indeed. No, I think the Tigers are going to have to make another move tomorrow, Mario, because they're going to have to activate Ibar, so. See yeah, what correct. happens. That's driven to right field, hit well, and going to be caught by Lorenzo Kane to end the ball game. Moylan has a 1 2 3 night to shut this one down, and the Royals have won the first two games of the series. They win tonight by a score of 6 to 1. And the Tigers were limited offensively tonight to just three hits. Well, the Tigers find themselves in the same situation that they were in Seattle, having lost the first two games. And they lost the first game in Texas and bounced back, so you got to find a way tomorrow to bounce back, get a victory. Just like we promised earlier in the game, it's Miller time brought to you by Miller Light. Unfortunately, it's the Royals, the Raul Mondesi right there in the bottom of the third inning. It's his first home run. Then we got Alex Gordon in the bottom of the fifth. He goes yard as well. Eric Hosmer in the seventh. And then in the ninth inning, Kendrys Morales jumps the first pitch of Mark Lowe. And that's four home runs for the Royals tonight. Tigers can only match one home run. We go on to defeat in a 6-1 game. So the Royals win this one here tonight. Tigers try and salvage one tomorrow. We'll be back.